Thank you to Alexander RHH for their generous donation on Patreon. The light of the moon becomes the light of the sun, and it shines through a window. I am not an angel, I asserted, and I will not be one until I die. I will be myself. What the fuck? Oh, hey, this is the classroom. If it's a classroom, it's probably uh, Murdoch's sister. Mr. Rochester, you must neither expect nor exact anything celestial of me, for you will not get it any more than I shall get it of you, which I do not at all anticipate. Hey, what the fuck did I get out of that? There you go. What do you think brown bront bront means with what Jane is saying here, Miss Boink? Boink? Oh. Who are we right now? Where are we? Melissa? Wait. Is Mel Wait. Which one is Melissa? She was looking at me, so I knew this was coming. I felt my face screw up, starting to stall. What did it mean, really? I suppose she might have been saying that she doesn't care if that she's bad? Mrs. Burns just gives me that kind smile like she always does whenever I say something wrong. Well, let's take a look at it line by line, shall we? I am not an angel. Is an angel something that a person should want to be? Well, God loves them. But remember, even in a biblical sense, angels are soulless. Angels are said to be jealous of man and woman's rights to atone and choose and to choose who they wish to be. So you're saying my mama is calling me soulless when I behave like an angel? And we got Blythe over here, so I, I, I couldn't remember Blythe's name, but I, I when I was thinking of who the hell Melissa was, the only other candidate for who Melissa is was the girl that Blythe talked about as being the girl that, like, got, like, what, kidnapped or disappeared or whatever the hell happened that she talked about in, um... Ugh. In the, is it Nick's route? Where he it it, uh, it explores with Blythe. I think she's saying we don't act like ourselves when we only do what other people want us to do. Well put, Miss Washington. Though I would still like to hear more from Miss Boyk. You must neither expect nor exact anything celestial of me, for you will not get it any more than I shall get it of you. What does celestial mean? Uh, the stars? Right, the stars, the planets, the heavens. Distant, unreachable, unearthly things. She is a person, not a star, nor a planet, nor an angel. Exactly. She is of this world, tangible, understandable, ap approachable in flaws and favors. And what about the last part? For you will not get it any more than I shall get it of you. Women don't expect divinity from mortal men. So men shouldn't expect it from women either? Which I not at all anticipate. She knows with certainty she will not receive divinity. They are not yet equals in understanding one another. Jane herself is far ahead of Mr. Rochester in this respect. Why don't you both give me your favorite quotes from the novel, and we can close the lesson on that. 
Oh, um, uh, sure. Let me just find where I highlighted it in the book. I'm ready to read mine. Go ahead. Conventionality is not morality. Self-righteousness is not religion. To attack the first is not to assail the last. Oh no, that's a good one. Why'd you have to go first, Blythe? I had a feeling you'd like that one, Miss Washington. Miss Boyd? Well, it's maybe not as good, but you told us to pick our favorite. So here's mine. I coughed to clear my voice. Oh, I dare say she is crying because she could not go out with Mrs. in the carriage, imposed Bessie. Surely not. Why, she is too old for such pettishness. I thought so too. And my self-esteem being wounded by the false charge, I answered promptly. I never cried for such a thing in my life. I hate going out in the carriage. I cry because I am miserable. Mrs. Burns' eyebrow perked up. Okay, well let's focus just on what Jane is saying there. Now, why did you pick that one? Well, sometimes I don't get enough sleep. And when I have to wake up too early, I feel like I want to cry a lot. So this makes me feel better about that. If we can feel more alive when we cry, I think that's a nice sentiment. I think what Jane may be talking about there is owning the deliberation of her emotions and not allowing them to be misinterpreted. But if we expand on your interpretation of the passage, we could apply it to how sobering it is to feel anything, right? Feeling is a part of thinking, and as Descartes says, I think, therefore I am. That ties fairly well into my favorite quote, which I'll conclude today's lesson with. Do you think I am an automaton? A machine without feelings? And can bear to have my morsel of bread snatched from my lips and my drop of living water dashed from my cup? Do you think because I am poor, obscure, plain and little, I am soulless and heartless? Do you, you think wrong? I have much, I have as much soul as you and full as much as heart. And if God has gifted me with some beauty and much wealth, I should have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is now for me to leave you. I am not talking to you now through the medium of custom, conventionalities, or even of mortal flesh. It is my spirit that addresses your spirit just as if both had passed through the grave and we stood at God's feet equal as we are. She closed her book with a light puff, still smiling. Class dismissed. I don't know why there's a huge crowd. There seem to be only two people in this class. After I tuck all of my things into my handbag, I rise, still feeling a little dizzy. Wyatt is waiting for me outside the hall. I can't for the life of me figure out how she's so fast. She starts talking to me as we walk. Thank the Lord that's over. I'll say. I can't stand that class. Oh. Oh? Well, I meant the reading out loud, not the class. I'm growing fond of it. But it's way too fucking easy. I could just read all these books at home. Well, I don't know how you manage. 
half the words these people say I haven't seen before. Well, so maybe consider buying a dictionary? I don't want to go back and forth between two books to read a single story. Well, you should for things like this. Talking about it helps for me. If you say so. Nobody said anything I needed to hear yet. Well, sorry not everybody's a genius like you. You don't have to be a genius to pick up on what's going on in books. Just like being good at listening to somebody. Oh, is it? Yeah, huh? So you know how in a conversation, sometimes people say things without saying them? Like when you know what somebody could be saying, but how they say it changes the meaning? Like when Bailey Freeman says, You must be drinking milk when she really means you're gaining weight. Sort of. But instead, books can do that with descriptions of images on top of just what the dialogue of the characters are saying. Like how La Laputa mm, is the name of the flying castle made by the big brain scholars in Gulliver's Travels. But it also means the whore because they're lacking common sense. Well, if reading is just like having a conversation with somebody, it makes perfect sense why I struggle. If somebody makes me uncomfortable, I just... I don't want to spend hours of my life with them all by my lonesome. The good thing about books is that you can skim them to read faster. Can't make people talk faster. Without threats, I mean. I doubt I'll ever get fast at reading without a dictionary open. It's not that bad. When you can focus, maybe. You mentioned having sleep problems. Just lots of bad dreams. Mostly since Mary read that letter. Okay, so Mary was the ones with the letters. Uh, I couldn't remember if I couldn't remember that story. It was just one scene, so I don't blame you. That was gross. I still haven't heard from her since her family moved away. I'm surprised they talked to you at all. They only seem to like the other Protestant families. Well, Billy gave me an address, and I sent a letter. Billy fucking bedwetter. Oh, you stop that! That was years ago! His mom chased him down the street with those sheets. Regardless, I don't think he's a liar. He wasn't wearing a bra. I saw everything. <laughs> I don't... I don't want to say that. Blythe! What? Shut up! Sorry, just reliving a dire situation. All I know is that I'm probably gonna get a letter any day now and you're gonna be eating your words. That's so. Why, yes indeedy. You wanna head down to the tromping grounds tonight? What for? Found a bunch of money somebody dropped. Bought a cozy bit of carpet, end table, and some pillows. Well, we haven't had a sleepover in a while. Mm-hmm. Shit, I told my ma I'd be washing her tablecloth tonight. Their anniversary is coming up soon. Boring! You don't have to remind me. Maybe tomorrow night? I'll hold you to it then. The house is quiet when I got back. I guess Ma and Pa are out. But there's a letter on the table. It's small, neatly folded. But it has a sweet scent. I know that smell. Mediterranean peach. Mary. Jailbird. That's the poem I wrote about her. Blissful in your gold-coated burrows. Bows? Bro- Boos? I don't know that. I don't know how to pronounce that. Warbling as you warble. Twittering as your twiggy leg- Twittering and twiggy legged. Sitting impossibly pretty. But patiently professing. 
Your vanity will bring you a key. This perfume used to be the only thing she would wear. She liked that it was brand new. She called it mine cheap. I can't believe she put something so... I can't believe she put something as expensive as this on a piece of paper. Unless it was for a boyfriend. She and Billy weren't... I feel my mouth go a little dry. Well, maybe they are now if he knows her new address. She has to know he's still the delivery boy. That doesn't make sense. She always... She was always so mean to him. Ugh, I'm just being paranoid. I should be grateful that she spent the time to send me a letter in the first place. She probably doesn't have any new friends yet. But she never had a problem making friends, did she? Anyway, I open it as carefully as I can with my dad's letter opener. It almost seems like it's waxed from the inside. There's a strange heaviness to it. And it sticks to the sides when I try to open it. I need your help, Melissa Boyk. I can't get out of town. That man who sent me letters tried to hurt me. Then, so did my parents. I'm hiding in your tromping grounds. My die if you don't save me. Jesus! Well! Talk about a fucking boom kind of fucking moment. Guess we're going to the fucking tromping grounds tonight. Fuck that thing we had to do. Fuck your chores. Huh. I have to reread what I'm seeing. More than once. This... This looks like her handwriting. But, but everybody said that she had moved away. Mary didn't like jokes. That's why she wasn't fun. Billy knew about this too? Well, why the hell didn't he say anything? I, I know he's dumb, but he's not that dumb. Why wouldn't she be in the chopping grounds, though? We only took her there once. Those tunnels can go on for miles if you don't know what you're doing. Billy's the only one who knows what she's doing. Uh, but can I wait for her this time? How long has Mary been down there? This is stupid. This is so stupid. Somebody needs me and I'm wasting time. I can't wait for Blythe to hold my hand anymore. I take out a bottle of ink and a pen and a piece of cardstock and I start writing. Mary is somewhere in the tromping grounds. Billy knows, I think. I have to go find her. I feel my paws shaking. Come find me too if I'm not at school tomorrow. But underneath the mat behind the back door of my house. She'll check it at night whenever I'm she's able to get away from her dad. I know she doesn't like her very much. But that never seemed to bother her. I know it would bother me though. It does bother me. Why does everybody have to be so nasty in this community? Mean and high-strung and crazy. Even Mary was mean. Mean in her own way. But she doesn't deserve to be holed up in the ground, running from some freak or her own parents. I'm coming, Mary. You can live with us for a while if you need to. Christ. When I open the door to the mausoleum, I can smell peaches again. Does that mean she was down here recently? I open the covering to the tunnel and the smell is stronger. Mary? Nobody answers. But I hear the wind rushing out and there's a flapping sound. Another letter is tucked between the wall and the frame of the sport beams. This one smells sickly sweet. Almost like it was soaked in the whole bottle. I pluck it out. It's damp. I have to be careful with this one or it feels like it'll fall apart. If the first letter made it to you, you're getting closer. I'm hiding in the mines. I stare at this one and feel something is wrong. 
If she made it this far, why wouldn't she wait near the entrance? Did she think the creep following her would know about the tromping grounds? I wouldn't think so. Me and Blythe have been down here hundreds of times. We would have seen somebody if anybody else knew about it. Unless she told. She was never very good at keeping a secret, but why would she tell somebody who she was afraid of? Maybe it was somebody she trusted? I guess I can ask her myself when I find her. I'm not the best at finding my way through... I'm not the best at finding my way to the path that leads to the mines, but luckily, there's still a smell to follow. It's like she's leaving breadcrumbs for my nose. I'm starting to hate the smell of peaches. The smell is so sweet and so thick that it smell it feels slightly off. Like fruit in the sun that's been rotting. Ahead of me, in the light of the sunbeam, I can see another letter. It's in a big room on top of a big pile of rocks. I'm not the best climber, but I could probably go get to it. Get to... I could probably get to it if I tried, I imagine. But for some reason, I don't want to. For some reason, I stop. I can feel my heart in my throat. This just isn't like the Mary I knew. The Mary I knew didn't like to get dirty, much less have a breadcrumb trail down into a mine shaft. She wasn't that exciting. I know that I'm not supposed to get that letter, especially now. Because I can hear breathing around that corner. It's faint. But it's there. Deep breathing that has to belong to a grown man. Tears well up in my eyes. Cover my mouth with my hand and breathe through my nose. And I walk backwards. Slowly. Until I hear him stand up. And break into a run. Oh no. Oh god, no! He's behind me now, I can't bother with pretending to be quiet. Now I have to be fast and go as quickly as I can in any way that I can. Any way from him. I can hear him again, he's not even trying to be quiet. He's rasping as he runs. I can hear how much he hates me. He doesn't even know me and I know he hates me. But I know where I am now. I can shake him. I keep turning. And turning. Looking for the dots of paint that Blythe put down. Find a pathway that's too thin to fit through where, through where my feet are covered in water. But something catches me! I'm falling and I feel a splash! Oh my god. My clothes are covered in water and I'm soaked to the bone. That's a fucking body, bro. That's a fucking- oh my god. I don't care about that right now. Because what I see in front of me is so much worse. I remember Mary's favorite dress. It's pink like bubblegum and has puffy sleeves. It was the kind of pink you'd see a baby swaddled in. It matched the inside of her ears and rosy blush of her nose. But Mary's whole nose is gone. I want to go back. I want to go back to before this happened. And we pretended like we didn't even know each other. But we pulled each other's hair when the teachers weren't looking, when she told me she'd marry the next president, when then I told her I wouldn't even I wouldn't have her as a wife. Mary doesn't belong in a place like this. Mary belongs in a glamorous place. Like one of her parties. Full of light and admirers holding a glass of something fizzy that she's not supposed to be holding. No. 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 We're all just babies. I can hear my voice crack. 
My whole breath is ripped out of my chest. And I can't even scream anymore. Because I just want to cry and cry and cry. And have my tears raised in water in this godforsaken cavern. I would fill every nook and wash away every secret until it is flushed clean of people and their perversions of what is good, of what is magic and sacred and special. She was Mrs. Applegate's baby. It's drowning me out. She was Mrs. Applegate's baby and you killed her! The cave water is drowning me out. I want to throw up. So I start to. And in spite of that, the tears feel more forceful than the bile. How could somebody do this? How could somebody choose to do this? I shouldn't have come here on my own. It was already too late. But what can I do now? Who can I go to? What can I say? We were told that all of the Applegates moved away. Are they all dead somewhere too? Or did they all just leave her? If I try to bring Mary's... If I try to bring Mary, then I'll get caught. And I'll just end up like her. Mary. I have to go. I, and I won't be back. I want her to beg me not to go. But I know she can never speak again. I can't take you with me. I'm sorry. I'll bring back strong people. Good people. They'll get you out of here. We'll hang the guy who did it. And they'll never, never do it again. I shake my head. Never, ever, ever again. Goodbye. My eyes sting so much that I can't even see where I'm going. But I don't need to. I just have to climb. Rabbits are good at climbing, and they keep moving, one paw forward, one leg backwards, I wonder if I'm having a heart attack. She's still out there. I cover my mouth. I don't know what I heard exactly, but I could tell that it's speaking. It sounds wrong. How do you know, spirit? The other voice belongs to a man. It belongs to a man and it makes me sick. Because I know what I like. It's absolutely leaking everywhere. Spare me your carnal tastes. You have them too. There's no pleasure in this business. There's no need to be joy. It just needs to work. And it will. After everything you had me do, it better. You come, to, you came to me with nothing. You are in almost every sense nothing. I'm nothing. You could do none of this on your own. You will be grateful, and you would do better to learn to like what you are. That's what I did. It's part of the secret. I will have none of your secrets. I will have results, and then I will be gone from this abominable place. You make it sound so easy. I'm experienced. No. You're fading. Everybody's lights go out. Forever. You began your life as nothing. And you will return to nothing. The only way forward is to become something. By learning. And indulging. Your indulgence is an abomination. 
Yet it is something. You don't even have that. I will never want what you have. And you never will. But for now, we want the same reckoning to pass. Go fetch her for me while her insides are still warm. If I can find her... Wait. No, never mind. It's too late. What's too late? You failed, you poor creature. I have to go. Yes, I have to go. And she'll be spoiled. Unbelievable. I really wanted this. How sad. You don't realize it yet. But every failure you commit undermines your chance to escape. I don't rely on you for such a thing. And yet you must. Or else your eyes will be opened. And you'll wish it was me who did the prying. Come back another night with a fresher piece of ass. Why are you leaving? Spirit? Answer me, spirit! The man began to mumble. Miserable wet shit. Then his voice faded. Oh, I just I forgot I wasn't narrating as, as the girl. Sorry. And the only sound that was left was once again the roar of the cave water. Every moment I stay still, I feel a little closer to death. So I have to start moving again. I have to get out and tell people about Mary. About these monsters. I climb until I can't see light anymore. The further I go, the darker it gets. Then finally, eventually, I can see light again. Light from the ceiling. Light from the sun. Oh! Oh my god! This is the, the, the most explicit depiction we have seen of a relationship between a monster in the cave, or the mines, and, like, a symbiosis of Echo's fucking curse. Because we've seen, like, a picture of it before with, like, a spider thing, but, like, an explicit dealing, trading, uh... F like flesh for a uh, dealing we didn't get a confirmation of who that was um but given the fact that there is a one family that has been at the heart of echo at the whole time i think there's obviously some sort of like dealing between whatever this creature is and the hendrix family um but like look at that let me let me h this shit look at that God damn. Are we really going to get in this game an explicit depiction of what the Curse of Echo is? Obviously not the origin, but like, we could still get a depiction of what it is. That fucking creature and what it is. Holy shit. Wait. Wait. There, oh my god. No. No. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a mind break. Oh no, don't you... F oh! Whoa! Okay. Yeah, that was fucking... Okay, can we get... I don't want to see that again, but like... There's like hands on it and shit. Alright, let me get a closer look on this shit.
Oh, God. Uh, there's too much to look at on that one thing. So uh, I'm going to look at it in editing. And for the viewing audience at home, I'll probably show up a screenshot of the CG. But like, holy Christ. Look at this shit. I obviously can't look at it right now as I'm recording. But for you at home, as you're watching it, look at that. Whatever it is. I'm looking at it while editing. Oh, look at all of that. Whatever you're seeing. Jesus. I hear myself screaming. And then I see the end of my bed frame. So I must be sitting up. Okay. Fine. Time to get out of bed. Bloody Mary, Mother of Christ! I guess for air again. No need to be delicate about this. I like this is the first time that has happened before. Now we're blithe, apparently. Time to collect my thoughts. Who did I hear? What did I see? I saw myself, only it was earlier in the week. The letter. The tunnels. Mary's body. Voices I couldn't place. I saw Mr. Ayers there too, watching with me. Mr. I Mr. Ayers, okay. Except he was alone this time. I saw a Melissa- Ma Wait a minute, Mr. Ayers. Wait a fucking minute. Mr. Ayers there too, watching with me. So is she saying that the man's voice was Sam? Oh, fuck me. Except he was alone this time. I saw what Melissa hid, and what she saw. Maybe it couldn't get to her? Thinking about it, it doesn't matter now. The way forward is clear. I need matches, and a lamp. Spikes, a hammer, a flask, rope, and a weapon. Would a weapon even work on a spirit like that? Probably not. They usually don't. But spirits aren't usually what I have to worry about. <sighs> Wonder if my epi would be good enough. I slipped the sheath of the sword around- What? She has a sword now? Is- is Blythe some spiritual fucking warrior out of no- WARRIOR! I don't- what the fuck? She has a sword now. She slips a sword around her waist, sorry. It's early enough that I can sneak into the living room. I don't hear anybody moving outside of the hallway. So I grab my bag. The loose floorboard is in the kitchen by the sink. I'll have to take the crowbar to it if the damn thing is stuck. Thankfully, it isn't. I feel around for the cold metal handle. There it is. Pull it out and put it in my bag. There's a box of bullets, too. That I'll need a refill. The more ammo couldn't hurt. Door to my father's bedroom opens. Shit! Shit! I have to scramble to put the floorboard back in on the- on- in on time. Crab walk time! Blythe. I jumped to my feet now. You answer me now, Blythe Washington. Why is there so much wrestling going on out here? I brushed the dirt off my skirt. Just finishing up breakfast. I can't see you. Come on over here. I don't have time for this. No. He's sitting at the table with his newspaper in his hand. You feed the children? Did last night. And collect the eggs? What there was to collect. Then he lowers it. Don't buy the line if you can't tell a good one. I know that look he's giving me. Where are you going? Out and about. For what? More games? Likely a bit of sparring. You ain't playing with swords that are gonna put food on the table? If I rob them. 
always got something to say now, don't you? Her mom is looking at me now. She's sitting at the chair beside him. Believe me when I say I know the world is changing. And hallelujah for that. His eyes are bulging. But one thing that won't change is that the world will work you to the bone. I don't want to catch you sitting pretty waiting for a good man to take you in. You need a plan. I have to shift the weight of the bag on my shoulder and the hilt on my waist. Well, I like to think I'm pretty good at those. I'm gonna need you to convince me. I'll work on that. He stares at me. I promise. Don't promise me anything. Show me. I said I'll work on that. Keep it ship shape, little missy. Now come on over and give me a hug. Nah. Nah? Can't even give your old man hugs anymore? It's strange. He chews on the inside of his lip while he and when he hears that and huffs. Guess you'd be the expert on strange. Mom still didn't say anything. I think now that most people don't when they... I think now that most... What? I think now that most people don't when they're dead. What the fuck does that mean? If that really is her. What the fuck is... What the hell does that mean? We'll pick this discussion back up tonight. If your chores are handled, I won't keep you. Have a good day at work. See you soon. I walk out the door, wondering if that's the last thing my dad will ever say to me. Not as dramatic as I would like it to be. And again, I don't like to lose. And I won't climb back out of this godforsaken pit without my fucking friend. No! When I wake up, the bed is wet from my own sweat. My head is spinning and it feels like I was choking underwater. I'm so greedy for fresh air, my throat hurts. I'm trying hard to remember everything that before it slips away because I know it was important. It's like I was trapped following that girl. The other girl was there too. Or at least I think she was. I know. I felt her eyes on me. I don't think I've ever had a dream like that before. It was like a memory. But the pieces were all out of order. And I'm forgetting everything faster than I can control. There's a familiar feeling sticking to me. A sour, sordid feeling that churns in my gut like curdled milk. Whatever I dreamt that girl saw, whatever horrible feeling it was, I have this strange familiarity attached to it. Like it's something I've seen before because of something I did. Something long before I ever even came to this town. But there's this other sense that I have that's nagging me. Like it's not real. Like it's made up. Or it doesn't even belong to me. I clean myself up and, and get dressed for the day. I almost forget to take the suit with me, but I, I snatch it up from the closet right before I leave. Wow, he got a... Oh, oh, that's weird. So it, maybe it wasn't Mr. Ah, it wasn't us. Maybe it was a, someone like she interpreted it as us, us as in Sam, but like, that's fucking weird. Like the voice was someone else who inhabited the, 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 the like soul bearing thing that's so fucking weird and of course given this series's history of answering the questions itself poses i doubt we'll ever fucking find out what the hell but god damn that would be it's crazy go nuts <sighs> when i get to the store i'm handed a list of tasks Murdoch lets me handle the inventory of the store, and I'm grateful for that. Most of the day passes without incident. 
Mostly just a steady stream of people purchasing canned goods and disposable paper products. A well-dressed older woman comes in inquiring for something called streakening, and Ralph quickly moves quickly to help her. I don't have any time or any place to talk about what dreamed what I dreamed last night. And part of me is grateful for that too. When my mind's on work, there is when my mind's on work, there isn't much room for other things. I think I understand now why idle thoughts are dangerous. Ah! You there! I'm surprised. I'm so surprised by this man's appearance that I have to bite my own tongue to keep myself from letting loose an unholy string of expletives. We're closing up shop early today. Tell my son and the cashier they should go back to the house to prepare for the bachelor party. I feel like he should be telling them this instead, since he's the boss, but I know better than to argue. We're prepared on our end. Everything's already sorted. Good. I'll be late to the house if I can make it at all. He nods. Off you all go. I nod, then pull my suit from one of the closets and sling it over my left shoulder. I'm really looking forward to the days when I don't have to carry around formal wear like an idiot. Y'all yeah, mind if we talk while we walk? So you have to hear my atrocious voice for Ralph. Great. Two of them look at one another. About what? Similar stuff to what we talked about at the lake. Not really the time nor the place. Unless you think it's urgent. Not really sure. It was a dream after all. They both tense up. There's a history of weird dreams becoming particularly lucid around these parts. Though if it's related to what we talked about at the lake, I haven't the faintest idea. Do any of those dreams ever turn out to be things that really happen? Or things that can come true? I sure hope not. I oh, she gonna be banging my brains out soon. Oh! Ralph. <laughs> oh, come on, that one was easy. Anyway, I've had strange dreams before myself. Oh? Holly once talked about an idea written by a French philosopher, by the French philosopher Emile Baruch. Okay. You already feel my eyes glazing over. Uh huh. He had written about why cultures around the world might believe in premonitions of prophecy. The idea suggests that people can experience a sensation for the first time while distracted or addled. But then, when the second time happens, memory of the first kicks in and it feels much stronger, much more eerie. I see. I don't think that's what happened. Maybe not. But it's the first thing I could think of. Thanks, anyway. Do you remember much about the dream? To be honest, it's fading quick. Now I'm down to barebone details. Even the voices in them are getting harder to place. Like when you hear a person talking, but you're both underwater? Murdoch droops a little at that and Ralph's eyes narrow. I should change the subject. Forget it. It's not important. We all stopped, a little tumbleweed passes by. So, uh, what should I know to be ready for for this bachelor party? Never been to a bachelor party before, Sam. Never really knew many bachelors. At least not rich ones. Get ready for lots of drinking and a stripper or two. Sounds like every night at the hip. As it happens, he gives me a slightly apologetic grin. No. That's the venue. Christ. I'd hoped one of the people I worked with would have warned me about something like this. I could have left my damn suit in my closet, too. Except you don't work there. Remember? You really think folks would have... You really think folks would have noticed? If 
Fox and the Rat exchanged skeptical glances. They'd know. They'd know. No doubt. Here we are. Whoa! Oh, yep, yeah, forgot. I can see the Burns house peeking out from behind a row of houses. And there's somebody standing at the gate. It's... Mrs. Burns. Goodness me! Looks like the cavalry's here. You all must be at least an hour early. Murdoch opens his mouth, but she turns her attention to the gate. I certainly hope you're all fed and not thirsty, because the sun tea takes at least three hours, and uh, the batch in the backyard has at least an hour to go. That won't be necessary. Making a guest comfortable is always necessary, Murdy. Yeah, that's right, Murdy. <laughs> Murdoch glanced at Murdoch glared at him. Nine out of ten guests will tell you that they aren't thirsty. But you put a t cup of tea in front of them without asking, and they'll almost always drink. If only you'd learned a little bit of hospitality, then your housemate might not be skin and bones. That put a grin on Murdoch's face and wiped a smile off of Ralph. I hope you both take lessons from this young man. She nods at me. Now he looks like he eats, right? I don't dare tell her that my diet's mostly just preserved meat and vegetables. We follow her through the front door and I'm greeted with the apple and spice scents of the Burns family foyer. The girls are out back in the rose gardens and don't any of you think about pestering them. What for? She quirked an eyebrow. For the bachelorette party? Is this your first wedding, honey? The first one with wealthy people? Been a while. Feel something hook onto my elbow. Let me show your guest to the upstairs bathroom. I'll get a kettle of tea boiling. I can tell we could all use the caffeine. Murdoch is guiding me up the stairs. Uh, there's something wrong? I don't know, nothing in particular. I just want us to all be prepared. I'll come find you when you sort it out. We can probably just get dressed in the same room. He's already gone. I sigh. This is one of the nicer bathrooms I've ever been in. There's porcelain knickknacks and silver bells. I hang the suit up on the door. Then I hear something. Go to the window and see something below. It's the sisters. Wedding superstition is that you're not supposed to look at the women until they come out of a come out of a box, right? Or is that just a groom? Or is or just on the wedding day? <sighs> Fuck it. You seem rather placid. Well, why shouldn't I be? I'm about to be surrounded by good food. Good company? I haven't been in a proper party for nearly a year, much less one planned for me. And everything's fine. Is it not? It's just strange to me that you don't have the jitters yet. Why would I? I've looked forward to this day my entire life. Which means you have expectations. Which means I have confidence, dear. Even if you shoot down his move proposal. The issue is on the back burner for now. I don't think it's particularly important. A home is still a home wherever we might end up. And I suppose you think that'll go over well with her? I suppose that it'll have to. It's my life, after all. Despite its gravitational pull on the rest of us, there's no way that can last. We're going on three decades. Then I'm sorry. If, you're, if you were sorry, then you'd push back a little harder when she puts more responsibilities on you. You should know by now that guilt trips don't work on me. I wasn't doing anything of the sort, you silly thing. You were. Now hold still. There's clumps on your tail. Evening, girls. My talk! 
You're a little early. Better than late, no. After a fashion. It's your day, Holly. Can I get you anything? Oh, water might be nice. I have a few things written down that we could use for the party. Here it is. Excellent. I'll see it done after I get dressed myself. My tail tips over something and I hear a sharp ringing sound. I realize now that the window is wide open and I'm almost entirely <laughs> nude. Come on, man. So I step away as quickly as I can. I don't hear anybody screaming, so I assume nobody saw me. I better hurry up. There. Shirt tucked. Vest buttoned. Cufflinks slotted. Ay. Walk downstairs to poke my head into the living room. I don't see Murdoch or Ralph yet. Oh good, you're here. Make yourself comfortable. We don't stigmatize the help in this house. I nod, feeling my cheeks get a bit flushed. She puts a cup on a coaster in front of me and pours it. Drink. I remember her earlier comments and know that it's not a suggestion. The taste is strong, but smooth. Surprisingly nice. So, what are you all about? Oh, what am I about, ma'am? She shrugs. Your hopes. Your dreams. Your ambitions. Ideologies. Anything, really. I haven't quite sketched a mental image of you. The ink smudges are there, sure, but nothing substantial. I don't mean to be rude, but I, I don't think I'm very interesting. It's quite rude to keep a conversation on ice, Mr. Ayers. You can tell me anything you like. Considering the great many families I come across in my line of work, I can guarantee that anything you tell me, I've probably heard about something else. I've been told I have an open mind. Unless you're a communist. I'm afraid I don't know much about politics, ma'am. Well, that's no good. You're what, 23? 25. How can you possibly get your government to protect you if you don't even know what your government can do for you? I guess that's true. I was joking about the communism, by the way. Your labor's good to me, even if you don't believe in the dollar. Do you at least plan on voting this November? I don't really vote. So not only do you not know what to vote for, but you wouldn't even if you did. That's pitiful. I'm sorry our country failed you, because it's been failing me since birth, sweetheart. You at least know that women can't currently vote in this country, right? That's something I do know, at least. Unfortunately. She sees my frown and smiles. That won't be the case for long. I'd wager the house on that. We were a knock on the door. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know, it would be the bee's knees if everybody were early at school every day. Go on, get the door. I don't think I could disobey this woman if I tried. I stand up and march to the door. I put my paw on the cold handle, twist it, and tug it open. To be continued. Well, who the fuck could it be at the door if... That is the fucking breaking point. That's gotta be a hell of a person at the door. Is it James? Is it fucking... I think, like, that's, like... Is it William? Like... Who the fuck could it be that's at the door... If that's the fucking breaking point at the fucking... Wow. Well, underwhelming cliffhanger aside, that was a good-ass fucking, uh, update. Okay, well, apparently, as of the build 20, there is not a, uh, Nick update. Well, then I'm caught up. Wow. Uh, I guess that won't last long, I think. By the time this is up, there'll probably be a new fucking update. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye.